Guys, if you're anything like me, looking at maps has always been a huge part of my preparation and execution for my outdoor adventures. I have been using GoHunt digital maps on desktop and mobile for quite some time now. I have used these maps for years with, for my in-depth e-scouting tactics and my methods of using offline maps during the hunt. Well, now I'm happy to report GoHunt maps now covers all 50 states. There's two ways to get the Go Hunt map. You can sign up for a Go Hunt Insider membership and get the benefits of all the draw odds, harvest statistics, unit breakdown, strategy articles, as well as access to the 50 state maps, plus savings on gear for being an Insider member. Like right now, they're doing double points. For an Insider membership, sign up now at GoHunt.com, use the J. Scott promo code, and get a $50 Go Hunt Gear Shop gift card just for signing up. You can also just sign up for a Go Hunt Explorer membership, and that gives you access to 50 states for 50 bucks. Use the J. Scott promo code. Guys, also, don't forget to get a 10% discount on gear at the Go Hunt Gear Shop by using the J. Scott promo code. You can also reach out to my friend Cody Nelson of 20 plus years, either by phone or by text, 602-399-3699. Make sure you tell him I sent you. I want to thank GoHunt.com for their loyal sponsorship of my podcast. We're over 815 episodes in, and they've been with me for, since the beginning. I also want to thank Kuyu Ultralight Hunting for their sponsorship of this podcast. They provide the gear that I use on all of my hunting adventures. You can go to the Kuyu website directly, kuiu.com, order directly. They're a direct-to-consumer company. Uh, they make the best gear in the in the hunting industry, and I've been a loyal supporter of theirs for years. Also, phonescope.com. Go to phonescope.com. Use the J. Scott or jscott22 promo code and you're going to get a 10% discount at Phonescope. Guys, thanks for listening to the podcast. Thanks for, for supporting me. If you have any questions or you'd like to send me a comment, the best way to do that is on my Instagram account at jscottoutdoors. Again, let's get right to this episode and thanks for your support. Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today I have John Adams and Kevin Call of High Point Outfitters. Guys, how you doing? Doing great, great Jay. Thanks for the thanks for the phone call. We're excited uh, about current conditions. It's looking good out there. Awesome, yeah. So I want to know you guys are based there in Flagstaff, Arizona, but you kind of cover all of those uh, units all around there. Um, how are things looking since the last time we talked? Give me kind of me and the listeners an update on on the conditions. You know, Jay, real quick, I get, you know, the monsoon started early, middle of June. We were excited all about that. And then it kind of dried up a little bit in the middle of July. It was like, what in the world's going on? But, uh, man, it's come back in with a vengeance uh, here uh, the last three weeks. So uh, it waters uh, everywhere. The feed is looking great. I mean, one of the ways I kind of gauge it is, I mean, as you mentioned, we live here in Flagstaff and, uh, out front of my house, uh, I've got a pond, and uh, sometimes it just completely dries up. Well, it's uh, it's got a couple feet of water in it. It's a beautiful thing. The grass is green. It's pretty much all over the mountain, uh, all over the Kaibab. Uh, looks great. The conditions uh, look real good. Okay, so um, from what I'm hearing from you, there's not really one dry spot. It's It's looking pretty good widespread all across that northern country up there. Yeah, it is pretty widespread, Jay. I mean, uh, I mean, just end of July uh, on the Kaibab, there were some dirt tanks that were uh, dry. Of course, all the trick tanks had water, uh, but it was kind of, uh, we were getting a little nervous, but now everything's got water, water everywhere, uh, great grass. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, it's looking good, pretty widespread. I, I can't think of a place that's uh, dry right now. Okay. Yeah, good. Yeah. One of, one, of, one of the like big reservoirs or you know big dirt ponds are like overflowing yet, but I mean most of the tanks have water. I mean from the Kaibab to nine, ten, five D, six A. I mean you name it. Like even six B, eight. I mean we've been pretty much running around and did the grass is pretty dang phenomenal. Twenty seven looks good. Twenty three looks good. Um, but, uh, you know, like, like our, one of our main lakes right here in Flagstaff, you know, Lake Mary, lower lake is, lower lake is dry, you know, so 
as far as like, and you know, Lake Powell, Lake Mead, all those lakes are, you know, hurting. But as far as like the grass and the ponds and stuff, like it, it looks really good. So I'm on my phone right now and I just pulled up Flagstaff, the 10 day forecast. And guys, starting today, it's anywhere from 40 to 80 percent with an average, I would say, of 60 across the board for showers. Um, so, I mean, that's great news for us as sportsmen, for our animals. Um, you know, too late to probably affect, obviously, they're rubbing right now to affect the elk antlers. Um, but, you know, the deer still, and, and I'm curious your input, I want to kind of start with deer first. They're right, they're still growing, and they, they're, they're, they could use every bit of this um, for their benefit. So do you feel like these storms still have a chance to really benefit the deer's antlers? No, a absolutely, Jay. I mean, uh, the last three weeks we've had – Fantastic moisture. The, I, I can't believe the difference, for example, in the new burn uh, and the Mangum fire up on the Kaibab. Uh, again, six weeks ago, it, decent growth. We were excited about it. But uh, this past weekend, I mean, it just went nuts in the last three weeks. So uh, for sure, uh, the, the deer are still putting it on, uh, you know, probably another three weeks or so. Uh, we'll get uh, some more good growth, and they're putting it on right now. I mean, the groceries are excellent uh, on the Kaibab. That's fantastic. Uh, guys, let's talk a little bit about elk. Um, obviously, trail cameras have been banned, um, so people might not have as good of inventory being able to compare bulls from year to year uh, yet. Um, you guys have been out looking around, I know. How do you see antler growth for elk um, this year? What what do you think it's going to be? Um, yeah, so and I'll go back like the last couple of years. Last two years we've had phenomenal, um, you know, our good uh, monsoon season. You know, the rut has been good. Last year's rut was great. Um, and uh, I was even talking to some Game and Fish guys about this just this week about – um, the calves, I mean, there is, there are calves everywhere now. So the, the calf dropping is phenomenal, even on the deer, um, the, the fawns, um, you know, on the, on the deer and the antelope, um, you know, we were just talking about this, um, like, like even in, in this is off the elk subject, I'll, I'll come back to that, but the, the fawn, um, it, you know, just in unit seven, I mean, like, Three years ago, we counted like two or three fawns, you know, on their surveys. It was it was pretty much nothing, you know. Um, and then coming back to this year, obviously, three years out, four years out is whenever you know the antelope, you know, start to peak in their in their horn growth, um, and and we're obviously seeing that, you know, on you know even these last two statewide tags, you know, trying to find. I mean, we turned the state inside out last year trying to find a ninety inch buck. You know, and uh, this year, you know, the two statewide tags are like, you know, 86, 87 inch type bucks. You know what I mean? So it's it's super hard to, to see it turn around full full circle. But after seeing the rut last year on the elk and stuff and then seeing how many how many calves we have this year it's phenomenal so with and, and that was you know i think mostly due to you know the monsoons that we had last year and stuff and the in the grass and in the water i'm starting to see that same trend happening again this year um so i'm super excited about the rut that's going to happen this year because you know from the grass and the water and stuff that we already have I, you know it, it looks good for a, for another phenomenal rut um the horn growth, um, to get to your question, um, I would not say it, it is off the charts by any means. I mean, we just saw a, uh, you know, one of the statewide bulls that was taken, you know, and, and you know, there's velvet scores and stuff, but, you, you know, you go back to hard horn scores, like what, what actual hunters are going to be hunting, um, not these statewide tags. Um, they just killed one off of the res, um, you know, the wall of pie, um, just, just this weekend, you know, it's like a 380 hard horn bull. 
Um, the other statewide bull that just got killed, you know, a week ago, that's another 380 hard horn bull. Um, it, so I would say, you know, there's, there's still one more statewide tag that needs to get killed. I think it's before August 14th. Um, and, you know, we'll see what that one brings in, but I, you know, the there's not there's not an abundance over 400 inch type bulls um it, i would say i would say they're kind of off 20 inches from what some of these caliber bulls could be um but the the mule deer on the kaibab they are grooming extras there's a lot there's a lot of more like little kickers droppers type stuff like that because they are that when when they were starting to grow their antlers there was more feed on the, on the kaibab when they were doing that when the elk started i i i'm not saying it, it was kind of like it was maybe there's a few bulls that were in the right areas where you know the snowpack was was at maybe grass started growing better um but i i wouldn't say it's off the charts on on antler growth this year that's that's my take okay so you're saying maybe slightly below just slightly below average is what you're saying Yes, but as far as like the the elk and their health, I mean, dude, they look like butterballs out there. I mean, they it their their capes are great. They're you, you're not seeing any ribs. I mean, dude, they're full size. I mean, I've been seeing some bulls. They look like they're pregnant out there. I mean, <laughs> they, they it it looks good as far as the health of of the elk and the, the calves and stuff and and the fawns. I would say that's more on the healthy side this year than I've seen in the years past. Um, but as far as the antler growth, I do not think we had a good enough snow packed. I'm not, you know, not, not saying that, you know, there's not those phenomenons, but as far as like, and it could just be the age class, Jay, honestly, it could just be maybe the age class of the bulls are down, but, but I'm going to say, I, I just wasn't that impressed on like the snow pack that we had this year to, to roll into that and the, in the, the storms hitting, you know, earlier on in the year to start that, that grass growing. It was dry out there a little bit. And then, you know, like, like Kevin was saying, you know, the middle of start in July was, was dry, but you know, that, that's my take there. There could be some different takes on that. Sure. Um, I'm going to put you guys on the spot here and kind of go through a couple units and I want you to tell me what you think in each unit, the best bull that will be harvested. Obviously it's just a guess, but kind of go with your gut. Um, <laughs> in, 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 here we go in the, in unit 10, it's, you guys do a lot of hunting in unit 10. Um, what do you think the biggest bull harvested out of all the seasons will be this, this year? I'll, I'll send you a, I'll send you a picture with my tag on it here in a couple months, Jay. Do you have a tag, John? Let's go. <laughs> that a boy. Oh, so, yeah, so, so now I know but, you were downplaying it because you have a tag. Now I get it. You you don't want to yeah. set the bar too high. Yeah, no, I uh, I'm pretty excited. I, yeah, so but um, I would say unit ten. Honestly, from what I've seen, what I've been scouting, it's not it's not off the charts. I mean, um, talking to some of the other, um, you know, guides, uh, you know, friends, kind of what they're seeing. I want to I want to say it's off off the charts. And, so what and, does that mean? Three seventy, three eighty. I think there's a lot of three seventy type bulls out there this year um, in Unit Ten, from you know three fifty to three seventy class bulls. Um, but I would, would surprise say, you like if a 400 came off 10, it would surprise you. Not at all. No, it's going to happen. Oh, it's going to happen. Oh, you think, <laughs> you think there will be a 400? Oh yeah. No, for sure. I, I think so. I think so. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to say like, yeah, I'm going to, I mean that res bull that they just killed. I mean, he's, he's close, right? Give him an extra and he's there. You know what I mean? Right. And that, that just got killed. And, but I mean, it, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say like some, th like, I mean, we killed like a 385 bull last year and the horn growth was garbage last year. You know what I mean? Right. I think the horn go growth is better this year. So I, I would say, I would say it's, it's probably there. I mean, 
Um, yeah, I mean, they killed a 400 inch bull in Tim last year. You know what I mean? So it, it, it it's, it's definitely possible. The age class is there in 10. It's going to happen. What about Whether, nine? Uh, yeah, I do know there's a 400 inch bull in nine already. Whether he gets harvested, who knows? Okay. What about five B North? Uh, I think three, there is, a, there is a 390 bull in five B. Um, but I, whether he moves, who knows, but I would say more, I, I would say people in 5B North need to more set their goals on like 330 to 350 type bulls. Um, but best bull I, I would say could hit 375, 380 this year, I would say maybe. What about 7 West? 370. Dude, that unit's going downhill. 7 East. <laughs> two, two, it's got to be, be in the 300s now come on two, 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 i hope some green fish guys are listening i i hope they bring that unit back Jeez, man it uh it, it used to be phenomenal yeah i'd say three i would say 350 type bull is probably gonna get killed 340 type bulls probably kill that 70s how about eight 350 6A. 350, yeah. 6B. 330. <laughs> um, okay, well, so it sounds like it's, from your opinion, there's still a few good bulls out there. Um, it's the, the conditions are phenomenal, but you don't think that the conditions are enough to make it a banner year I mean, so it's just no i mean jay look at the two statewide tags they've already killed you know what i mean right. like you look at you look at last year they killed i think they killed like a, a at the end of last year with some of the leftover tags i think that one bull is like a 370 bull you know another bull is like maybe a 380 type bull like um so you know definitely the, better than last year but not like 19 or like yeah no it's not like usually you're trying to kill these like you know like you'll see some of these statewide bulls going 450 and, and it could be because of the trail cam i know that definitely is going to affect that's going to start affecting these statewide tags big time not being able to run all these cameras right like even the mule deer um you know they didn't kill no you know, 280, 290 buck, you know, the one is like a 214 buck. And I think the other one went 230 with its two statewide mule deer tags. So, um, I, and, and I mean, the one, the one buck was like a 200 inch mainframe buck in, you know, so I do know that, that, uh, these statewide tags are definitely going to be affected by these trail cam band. Hey, Jay, one, Jay, one thing, um, the experience for the hunter this year is going to be uh, as as good as it was last year. Last year we had a phenomenal rut, uh, both deer and elk. Uh, the elk rut was the best uh, that I can remember, you know, in the last thirty years. I mean, last year it was off the charts. Um, this year we're far enough along in the uh, with the summer moisture with the grass that we've got on the ground and the water that we've got spread out and we're going to have another great rut i'll be shocked if we don't and that's that's the hunter experience will be fantastic again this year uh even though antler growth uh, may be uh you know on par maybe a little below par but the hunter experience is going to be fantastic because of uh well good rut this year okay because of conditions you're seeing the cows healthy and the the, the cycling ought to be great one question i have for you guys is uh with the archery season starting on the 9th i believe the moon is full on the 10th how what kind of advice do you give to people out there with archery elk tags in their pocket as far as how do you deal with that full moon kind of on that first weekend um Jay, we, we get this question all the time from our hunters you know do we do the first seven days do we do the last seven days whatever but i will tell you this that um uh no matter what to me this is my opinion no matter what the moon's doing no matter what uh uh 
to me, there's two things that make the huge difference, and that is I would take moisture and field conditions uh, every time uh, over moon phase. We've got great field conditions right now. The rut's going to be good. I would take the first seven days uh, consistently because we scout all summer. We know the bulls that we want to be on. We, I would take the opportunity at first crack at bulls over uh you know a week later after where they move who knows uh and so we like those first seven days typically no matter what the moon phase is um and you just hunt when you can hunt and uh yes the moon phase affects them a little bit uh we take care of that in consideration when we're hunting and when we hunt and all that but I, I would take the first seven days uh, any day of the week uh, with good field conditions like we'll have this year. Gotcha. So you're saying because of g good green feed, they're going to be feeling good. They're going to be rutting. Um, you, you, you think that plays more of a factor than the full moon? Absolutely. Okay. Um, what about uh, – so this question is for John. How are the coos deer looking, John? <laughs> you know what? Actually, I thought of you this morning. No joke. <laughs> I, I was, we're bear hunting, right? <laughs> I've been bear hunting with my with my youngest boy, and I'm seeing like ten coos deer, maybe fifteen coos deer to every single bear that I see. Wow! And I've only seen one bear. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, uh, and I'm looking at these things, and they're they're stinking cool. And we went up one, and my kids have obviously like we don't hunt coos deer, you know what I mean? So I'm like, watch this, guys. Like, you know, like I'm like, watch this, this deer will flip up its tail when we spook it, and they're like, oh my gosh, it looks like a white flag. Like they've never been that close to a coos deer, you know what I mean? So it was it was pretty cool for that. But yeah, no, that was. That was pretty funny, but I definitely did think about you um, this morning when I saw another coos deer. I was just like, "Man, how do people get excited about these things?" I think, but I saw it in my kid's eyes when when it lifted its tail. I was like, "Oh, maybe that's what it is." I think you know? I think your kids need to come spend a little time with Uncle Jay and get a true appreciation for God's truly God's deer. And and, and you know, I know you're raising them right, but I think you might be a uh, uh, lacking in in that in that category, so it sounds like they need to come spend a little summer camp time with Uncle Jay. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> well, guys, it sounds like um, you're you're optimistic. the 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 thing that I like w what I'm hearing is conditions are great, and yes, that means it helps for this season and and you know how it's going to be, but. My optimism is for future years when we have great summer rains, we have lots of rain in the forecast. I can't help but think of next year because I'm one of these that thinks and, 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 it's really nice not... to get in a, in a you know, a, a above average cycle where we start getting great monsoons and can put two or three years together of great monsoons you know throw in a good wind. And the thing about it, I, I do want to say like I'm I'm not like I, I do I'm not like, you know, dogging on anything that those, the, the people that have already tagged with these statewide animals, sure. like they're phenomenal animals. Like there's sure. no doubt about that. No, I'm just talking saying what like the that, reality is, right? That, that is a good gauge. Right. Like those guys get to hunt the best of the best in the state and, and they have, they have, you know, put a lot of money into guides spreading out throughout the whole entire state and they're getting pictures and videos sent to them and those guys get to pick right what they want you know what right. i mean and so and you're so using that, that as a barometer of yeah. like it's not 4 30 running what, around everywhere 4 yeah, 20 it's, 4 it's what, yeah is what we're seeing what they're seeing it's kind of like you kind of average it out and it's like yeah man i mean that's what they harvested did they harvest the best animal in the state I don't think so. You know what I mean? Sure. Did they harvest phenomenal? Absolutely. And this is what, you know, we've been talking about for the last few years, that if they do get rid of trail cameras, all the hunters should be excited because they get to go out into the woods and maybe see something that nobody's nobody else has seen. You know what I mean? Like, sure. there's, there's going to be these hidden gems way out in the middle of nowhere that all these trail cameras used to be able to give us information to and now so so whenever people see you know 
stuff getting taken and stuff it, that that shouldn't be their gauge of what the best animal is out there when there's no truck cameras it it yeah it, it 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 should open up their eyes that they could they could see something better they could see something nobody's seen and i think it's going to spread a lot of hunters out in the units now this year that that you know they're not all concentrated around you know one phenomenal animal at one tank or whatever it's going to spread them all out so that that is why i i think it's a good thing about the choke cameras that was the only thing i was i was trying to get at so Understood. Understood. Well, guys, um, thanks for coming on the podcast and sharing with us. I do want to give you a chance to let the listeners know how to follow you to, to hear more. Um, and I wish you the best of success in the coming season here. Yeah, no, thanks, Jay. You know, we, uh, we're excited to shoot the archery hunt starts next weekend. We're excited to kick off on the Kaibab and uh, get going. So uh, uh, the best way to catch us, uh, to go to our uh a website and it's highpointoutfitters.net uh, all of our information is there for contact that's the best way uh, if you want to follow john on instagram he's a z underscore hunter uh, and i am uh, hpo underscore kevin uh, underscore call um, if you want to see some uh, phenomenal flooding uh, we I've, I've put some stuff on my Instagram the last two weeks. There's some floods that are hit right by the house uh, on the Schultz Creek that has just devastated uh, Flagstaff, which is kind of crazy. Never thought it would happen on the west side of town, but we've had that's the kind of monsoons we've been getting, man. Two inches at a time in a half hour is just crazy, uh, the amount of water that's coming down. But, but anyway, yeah, we're excited. Next week, the hunt starts. Uh, we've got some great bucks spotted. We've seen so many fawns, uh, so many does with twins this year. It's exciting to see. And you're right, Jay. Uh, we'll reap the benefits of this uh, over the next few years, and that's what's exciting to keep things uh, moving right along. Fantastic. Well, that's great. Uh, guys, thanks for coming on. God bless. Okay? All right. Thanks, Jay. Appreciate it. Take care.